Okay, so there we go. Let's undo that. Now this is really good for cartoony models, obviously, because you can smooth it. But sooner or later, when you are in the when you're doing more detailed models, you will have to res up a bit earlier and, and get into them. Now there's still a few lumps and bumps around here, but what we're going to do is res up now. So Control D, Control D, and we've just gone up two levels. So we're at only at two hundred seven thousand polys here, which is not much for ZBrush. And now we want to start using some of these tools to just finish this guy off. So uh, let's use the H polish. Come in here. H polish is great because even at these sort of high levels, it allows you to polish off the sort of the lumpy parts. And if you just get the hang of this tool, it can work really nicely. See there's lumps and bumps over here. I generally will like to even just do a little bit of, so we're not too high here, just using a little bit of this clay build up and then smoothing it back and then a bit of H polish just to get those forms nice. Coming in here, so we're not at these ultra super high res sculpts yet. Get into that later. There we go. Now for something like that, sort of an ideal time for a pinch. So this is just like Maya's pinch. Maya's and Mudbox's pinch is actually superior to ZBrush's. It's like the only tool that is actually superior. So the pinch is a bit, if you're used to Maya's and Mudbox, it's not quite so great. But that will just pinch it and make that line a bit sharper. You can also, of course, use the dem standard, which is the common one. So a bit of the both of those techniques will work out pretty well there. But you can see now that you can build up that eye and really get these kind of nice shapes into that brow, just some move. So I still do use a lot of move because this is such a clean mesh. And I know that not every mesh is this clean. Like a lot of them can be lumpy and those ZBrush demons and whatnot. But even so, I think that this is a great way to learn. Very different from the way that most people I see teach. Not everybody, but you'll see a lot of stuff that's just keep it high poly all the time. So now around here, our eyes are not too bad a place, but we might want to just clean this up a little bit make it fit our eye a little bit better. Again, six is pinch for me. So just pinch that up a little bit. Long strokes seem to work well with the pinch there. Just again, just moving that eye around to get a nice shape there. Sort of ad-libbing it here, not worrying too much about the ref. Sort of see that coming together there. So a bit of move here, moving the, those down, these guys up a bit, small brush. You can really sort of start to Tailor this much more to be flatter, bringing that up to, to make it much more striking. Bigger brush, bring that in, you know, try to get that eyelid form. So obviously I'm thinking a lot about form and things in these areas where the eyelid would go. These things can be difficult when you're starting. Let's find good reference as much as possible. So H polish, polishing all that back a little bit. Just trying to get those forms a little bit nicer than smooth. Moving them back a bit, that's a bit too harsh now that guy can see how that's nicely coming together now and here you can sort of see I could use inverted damn standard how's that going it's helping out a little bit and then just even at that low level just gives a bit of a hint of that eyelid moving into there and I think that's okay even that's all nice and subtle in the front I don't know like that would come through sharp a bit just do it roughly and smooth it back okay this guy is pretty simple now around here, we do want to really strengthen up this mouth. So let's see what we can do here. So what we need to do now is just continue on our merry way and do the H polish. So at this 200,000 poly level, can sort of come in there, H polish up some of those bumps out. Now I really want to start working this area. So again, pinch, damn standard, H polish. They're all the tools that are going to allow us to get this a lot tighter. And we can totally get good forms just with these tools. Smaller brush for pinch. Pinch is not the greatest in ZBrush. If you are used to Maya's, it's a bit of a hint for Maya style sculpting is the pinch is gold because the knife and everything are so bad in comparison to this stuff. All right, so we're just really strengthening up those lines you see. Using a lot of pinch this time. Now what you can do is we can make a bit of a mask and do some overlap hooks. So you'll see in this area here, it's a little bit unclear and, and whatnot. And let's just do a little bit of masking now and, and show you how this works. So I'm just going to just finish this off a little bit stronger. Just want to show you this to, to give you an idea a bit about this. So we can totally mask the sort of bottom area and then overlap that top bite. So even on this high level here, we can now mask like with the zigzaggy parts. So I'm going to show you a new tool here. And if you come into, it's probably easiest to show this with the masking. Got a few brushes here for masking. So these are all the control keys. So by default, you've got this pen tool. If you hit that pen tool, that is the default mask. That's you just your paint. And you can totally come through and just paint like that. 
Now you've also got this mask lasso guy. So if you hit that now in control, you can now do this lasso stuff. So this pen, just to show you the difference, will give you a square drag. And the mask lasso will give you a lasso when you click out on the gray and into here. So we'll click out of this guy and I just want to mask. And there's all these little tricks to the masking tool, but I'll just keep this nice and simple. Just going to mask that roughly. And of course we can clean this up. Oh, we had a bit of a problem there. Again, mask lasso. Okay, one. And then I'm doing this quite roughly and quickly. Two, and then we can just do another one. So now if we'd made a polygroup before, if I'd made the polygroup before this, we could have kept the mask in kind of a way. Not ideal, but I'll cover this more in the even more advanced sections. We get into the nitty gritty. So just want to keep that one more time here. So just thought I'd show you that different tool. It's totally legitimate to just continue using the paint method. Just imagine this has been quite fat because it's not quite working there. Okay, so that's pretty good. And now I just want to work this section. So 